Okay, so this will only cover the components that we see in the Stiebel L-Trans Sol 25 Plus solar thermal installation that we're doing. So all I want to do on this video is just show you the main components. So these are the Sol 25 Plus collectors that would be example on our roof. It is plumbed for series. This up top right here is going to be their stainless steel flexible tubing. So what you do is you would run your copper pipe, most likely three quarter inch copper pipe. There will be a sweat soldered fitting that will go to the stainless steel tubing that connects these. So this is their product that will allow you to quickly connect these, in this case, three collectors. On our system that we're building, there will only be two of those. Next, there's going to be an inline temperature sensor. This sensor number one, that circle with the line going in right there, is going to tell me that that is going to measure the collector output temperature. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this last system up top here where I'm going to have an automatic vent. This vent right here is going to vent any air bubbles that are going to be in our system. Now in a closed loop system like this, there should be no air bubbles. Anytime I have air bubbles in it, it's going to be bad. So what I have is I have just a ball valve right here that will turn that on or off. I'm going to leave that on most of the time. I'm going to bleed the system and then turn it off. The automatic vent leads that air out and then I have fluid then that's going to leave. Go through here, through another valve body that's going to turn on or off. I'm going to go through a check valve. This check valve right here will keep thermal fluids from at night flowing backwards. We don't want that. We want the hot water solar thermal fluid to flow in one direction. So there's a check valve, flows into here, comes out. A drain valve, and then another possible drain valve right here, but just to shut off that I can open and close to let fluid flow. Flow meter, which tells me the velocity. I want to match the three-speed pump right here to be the same speed that's most efficient for collecting that solar energy. Running it too much, the pump is going to be wasting energy running too slow. I'm not going to capture as much sun to heat that solar thermal fluid. So that flow meter will tell me, and we'll get into that unit in a little bit, of how much velocity of fluid that I want to go. Again, another fill and drain valve right there. Another fill and drain valve right here. I can turn these valves on or off. And I'm going to erase all this right here. But this will allow me to cut out the pump in the system. And I can fill here and here if I had a pump that goes bad. I can also use that to help refill when and it comes time to replacing that expansion tank right there. So that gives me a way to do that. Anytime I see a darkened triangle that tells me that's a liquid, such as a solar thermal fluid, if I'm dealing hydraulics, that would be hydraulic pump. If I'm dealing with water for a hydronic station, that would be water. If that triangle is open, just an FYI, that would tell me that's a pneumatic pump for the system. So fluid goes through the flow meter. It'll go through. That valve will be opened. This valve will be open. I will go through here, and then I come back up to this system here. A couple rules of the road. Some people like to put their expansion tank on the bottom. Another person likes to keep these up top. And the reason for keeping the expansion tank up top is I'm drawing this as if that bladder inside of there, that rubber bladder ever goes bad. I'm always going to be able to push fluid up and keep that air inside of that tank. Even with that bladder ripped or torn, I will still keep that air up here to keep it pressurized. Whereas if it tears hair, that air is going to work its way into the system. So some folks like to keep that expansion tank on the top side. That's just personal preference for how some of it goes. But that, in a nutshell, is the most important ingredients that you're going to find in a closed-loop solar thermal system.